Blog Talk Radio. Women have the power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all agree to do one thing. Share. Let's share our wisdom, share our time, share our talents, share our finances. But most of all, let's share our love. This is The Female Solution. Join me, Naima Latif, every morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, as we bring you stimulating discussions about the issues affecting our lives. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution, press the blue button that says follow and get our daily topics every morning directly to your email and your smartphone. Hi, I'm Naima Latif executive producer of the Female Solution Radio Show. We invite you to call in 515-605-9325 and participate in this daily think tank as we examine the challenges we face and develop solutions that restore peace and harmony. We are global transformers, changing the world from the way it is to the way it should be. We are one. Wherever we live on this earth, We are one human family. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to extend a greeting to all the members of our family, whenever and wherever you may be listening around the world. To our family in China, Ni Hao. In India, Namaste. In Japan, Konnichiwa. In Korea, Annyeong Haseyo. In Russia, Zrastutsie. In Germany, Guten Tag. In Poland, Dzień Dobry. In France, bonjour. In Spain, hola. In Italy, ciao. In Egypt, athen wasalan. In Ghana, akwaba. In Nigeria, peleo. In South Africa, saobona. In Senegal, nangadef. In Kenya, jambo. In Israel, shalom. In Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia, assalamu alaikum. Greetings. And may peace be upon you all. Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed, into the swing of things? Well, don't worry, you are not alone. Join us for thought-provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on higher learning with Zelda Speaks for your Monday morning mindfulness sessions on Blog Talk Radio, The Female Solution, Mondays, 7.30 until 9 a.m. Be sure and send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit zeldaspeaks.com and send us your info. We'd love to have you. Experience mindfulness moments with the Mindfulness Slash Stress Relief Coach, Zelda Speaks. And thanks for sharing the Mindfulness Moment Tip of the Day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned to your next session of Mindfulness on Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. Make it a mindful day. And thanks for listening. February 13th, and you know what that means. Well, we'll talk about that later. But today, uh, happy Earth Day, birthday born day if you're celebrating a birthday. And we're celebrating it with you. But let us keep in mind of the chaos and confusion that is going on in the world. The earthquake a a week ago today, what, I think the count is up to 33,000 people that have lost their lives, so let us keep the families in Turkey and Syria in our prayers, and just prayers for people all over the world. There is so much chaos and confusion going on, and there are so many people that are affected by everything that's happening in the world, so let us keep, stay in prayer, 
and be mindful of the words that we say. Everybody in the continent needs to get together just for 60 seconds at noon daily to say a powerful prayer of protection. So share that with someone today, today at noon, every day at noon. In the news, uh, the polls are open today, and you can go and vote for the mayor of the city of Chicago. And all you have to do is go online and find where you need to be going. <coughs> Excuse me. But today's topic, veterans, helping veterans. And I think that is, is something admirable with uh, Victor Sarmiento. He will be joining us in the 7.30 hour. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about him when he comes on the show. And speaking of the show, have you been to the Chicago Auto Show? Then you have got to go to uh, the uh, On Air Everywhere with our uh, executive producer, Naima Latif, and I am looking for that page for you. It is, um, yeah, On Air Everywhere. And it is the Chicago uh, Auto Show highlights. I want to pull that up for you so that you can see that. We saw the most amazing things I have ever seen <laughs> in, my, in my life in a car. Lord have mercy. There is a, a car there that looks like an airplane. And there it is there, on air everywhere com. And we'll play a little bit of that later uh, when Naima comes on. But I just wanted you to see that because that is this is the most fascinating thing I've ever seen in my life. If you're watching online or listening online, you can uh, go to our Facebook and YouTube page at uh, Higher Learning TV Show, and you will see the information there to click on. And be sure and set those DVRs for the Higher Learning Network TV Show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19, and 24-7 on the World Wide Web uh, on our um, higherlearningnetwork.org. And don't forget about the fact that some of us have eaten just a little bit too much and sometimes we uh, develop diseases that we don't know anything about, like diabetes. And I am one of those people, and I encourage you to go to DiabeticDonut.com to download the free um, handout. Um, it's an ebook that I made on how I reverse type 2 diabetes and share that with someone because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And, you know, you always see me drinking this drink in the morning. Apple, beet, cucumber, lemon, ginger, kale. Doesn't taste the great, but it works, works wonders for the body. So be sure and check it out. Um, be sure... <coughs> excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Be sure and check out my um, YouTube page. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I do have a YouTube page. Um, I'll tell you about that later. But right now, check out my Instagram page. And why do, um, and I always have updates on our blog, hln-tv.blogspot.com. And um, uh, did I give you my Instagram site? Uh, Instagram, IG, uh, the Zelda Speaks, and Zelda Speaks to You. So go and check that out. You'll find some amazing things there. But right now, we're going to go to traffic. If you are headed out and about this morning, it is Monday morning madness on the streets, as it always is. So expect a few delays. That's why I always say leave out a little early. You know, save yourself some stress because <coughs> going out in the traffic is always a headache. And traffic and weather is sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. If you are a business owner, entrepreneur, and you have products or services, you can offer them on iTax. And you can also go shopping. And that's what we do. We've bought a car, a van, we've traveled. Just anything you can think of, you can buy anywhere so you can get it at iTax. But you got to use the promo code ZELDA, Z-E-L-D-A. Always giving thanks to the ancestors. As we take... A uh, look at traffic, your usual Monday morning madness. <coughs> traffic is sponsored by Chicago.itech.com. 
as we take a look at the roadways and the weather. Upper 40s today. You see me sweating already? I'm loving it. Plus, I'm drinking hot tea here in the mid-50s. Can you believe that for January? Oh, my goodness. Tuesday, we are expecting a quarter inch of rain. We don't care as long as it's not snow, okay? No reported delays on CTA or Metro, but if you're on the expressway, I told you, allow extra travel time. Inbound on the Kennedy is 34 minutes in, 27 on the reverse on the Edens, 29 in, 24 out. Uh, On the Eisenhower, slow at Mannheim, 29 minutes inbound, 21 on the reverse. On the Stevenson, 19 in, there's a second crash going on and uh, and a semi-truck, a single lane only down to one lane, and it's 17 minutes on the outbound. On the day in Ryan, your usual delays at uh, 35th, from 95th to 35th, 15 minutes inbound, 13 out. And on the Bishop Ford, it's 12 minutes in both directions, no delays. And Lakeshore Drive, DuSable, Lakeshore Drive, 11 minutes in and 9 minutes out. And that is your traffic and weather sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. And remember, if you are a person who slept good last night, slept in a bed that was warm, consider yourself blessed because not everyone has that opportunity to do that. At the Higher Learning Network, we have a mission. And part of that mission, well, we have the Global Virtual Teen Talent Contest that uh, comes on every last Saturday of the month. So the last one will be this last Saturday of the month, I think it's the 24th. And we showcase youth who are, we celebrate youth by the Teen Talent Contest by allowing them to compete for prizes and cash. And that is always available, so just go to our blog or org. But this is what touches my heart because of the fact that one year ago, today's the 13th, it happened on the 18th, my little brother Douglas Robinson was murdered in Tent City. Um, Tent City is on Des Plaines Avenue between Taylor and Roosevelt Road. It's right there next to the BP gas station. And you will see that the scent has come and put tents up. And this is what someone sent me. And I thought this was just phenomenal. Do you see this? Is this unbelievable or what? This is housing for the homeless. Three hundred dollars a month and that's what they showed me on TikTok and I just thought that was just phenomenal. You see that? Home Depot now sells tiny homes, fifteen thousand dollars, three hundred dollars, three hundred and one dollars a month. Wow. How can we make that available to those who are homeless here in the city of Chicago? I'd like you to type in your idea of how that's possible. Wow. Because it gives them a chance to get off the ground. Thank God it hasn't been that crazy uh, with the weather this um, year. It's, it's been cold, but it's not, it hasn't been as cold as it usually is because you know in Chicago it is just freezing cold 24 hours. Anyway, I think it's imperative that we continue to do the work to help the, the, the less fortunate, because not everybody has the ability to wake up in a warm room, and that's that's just crucial. And so we take them butane every week, and we do that because of you, because of your contribution. So if you would be so kind to keep them coming, because it's cold. Those um, 16-ounce canisters, we get them two for $10 from Walmart, 16 ounces. They keep them warm for eight hours, and we give them two a pair for $10. So uh, you can see the, I'm going to, uh, find the information to, there it is right there. Uh, you can cash app us, you can zell us, you can uh, Vimo us, uh, you can, uh, and PayPal. Yes, so that's all the information. And please share this video with us uh, to others and let them know that we are 
uh, doing the work that we have been assigned to do because my little brother, Douglas Robinson, bless his heart, may he rest in peace, was murdered right there, February 18th um, in Glenwood. And I didn't put his obituary up, but we are celebrating him today. Douglas Robinson, cool little dude. He was only, uh, I think he was just five years younger than me. But uh, he taught me a lot in his transition. And he's still teaching me because I'm still doing the work that I was uh, meant here, put here to do. So thank you so much for joining me this morning on Monday Morning Mindfulness. And it is now time for our Monday Morning Mindfulness Meditation, and which it is given to us by Brother Mike House. And Brother Mike always uh, just makes it plain and simple. <clears throat> so I want to share that with you. Are you ready? Alrighty, here we go. Monday, February 13th, I give praise. And I give praise that you're with us here this morning. In difficult situations and troubling times, we may ask, where is God? Do not doubt the question, but recognize the answer dwells in you. Look inside and start to praise. Praising emphasizes God's ability to make things happen. Praising is our worship in spirit. If you really want to see, hear, and feel God, just start praising. Hallelujah. I give praise for waking up in the morning and for receiving peace at night. Amen. I praise with words of thank you, Lord. I do not look for praises. Instead, I give praises. Praise what is is what I do. Thank you, Lord. Love in me, through me, as me, and around me, through the Christ within, and so it is. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We made it, y'all. We made it to to today, so that means we got work to do. And that's taken from Psalms 118 and 24. And that is your Monday morning mindfulness inspiration from Mike House. And you know what that means. It is 717. It's time for your Monday morning mindfulness meditation. Are you ready? Send somebody a quick text right quick while I get your meditation music. Be looking at me? Send them a text, man. (laughs) You know I get a little goofy sometimes, baby, don't mind. But that's what I do. So as we begin the process this morning, you will hear the sound of a click of a little ding. And that is for you to come back because your mind will wander. That's what the mind does, and you can't control it. So, But you can direct it. You can redirect it with sound and with breathing. So we're going to inhale, fill up our chest, and as we exhale, we'll release. And in doing so, we empower ourselves with the kind of energy that will get us through trials and tribulations. So let us begin the process. The first thing that I was you the Angelou says, The spirit that is with us and confusion.
and exhale. Ah. In, light down through the breast wiggling those toes as we inhale deeply let's
first you possibly
share it with someone because we all need it. Comments this morning. <laughs> John Caldwell, <laughs> Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Let me tell you this. Had I had the insight that my mom had 60, almost 70 years ago, I would be on an island somewhere doing this. Nintendo would not be racking up on Zelda. I would be. But anyway, it's over here. I digress. I do that. Oop, it's 7.32. It is time for our first commercial break of the day. And when we come back, we will be joined with our guest, Victor Sarmiento. And he is uh, the founder of Veterans Helping Veterans because it is a doggone shame our veterans go to war and come back and they do not have the resources that they need. Well, this young man found those resources, and I'll tell you all about that when we come back. But right now, we're going to take our first break. You stay close and share this page with somebody. Let them know that we're on. Okay? Thanks. Private Chicago contains entries. Community and politicians must come together to make a change. No one person can solve these problems by themselves. But I believe together we can make progress. That provides job training, economic growth, and investment to our 77 communities. Let's rebuild and restore Chicago. Vote for me for mayor of Chicago. I'm Dr. Willow Wilson, and I approve this message. Paid for by Willie Wilson for mayor. Susan Essentials leads you to wellness by giving you access to more than 20,000 sustainably produced nutritional products delivered direct to your door. Oh man, God sent the monthly sun bill today. This sunlight is really expensive, especially during this season. I'll probably have to work overtime to pay it. Well, you better pay it on time. We don't want the sun to go out and we're sitting up here all day in the dark. Wouldn't it be terrible if God charged us for sunlight? Well, thank God, the light and heat from the sun is free. So why are we paying such high bills for the energy we use in our homes? Because we don't know how to use solar energy, the free energy from the sun. You can convert your regular home to a solar energy home and save tremendously on your electric bill. Take a look at your electric bill. Wouldn't you like to reduce or possibly even eliminate that cost altogether? Let one of our solar consultants show you how. Call today, 312-849-3456. And schedule a free consultation. That's 312-849-3456. What if you could live to be 120 years old and remain active, healthy, alert, and vibrant? Our bodies are made up of cells that are constantly rejuvenating. So if we take proper care of our cells, we can literally defy aging. Join us every Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to learn about self cell care from Susan Essentials on the Female Solution Blog Talk Radio Show. Learn how to help your body and your cells feel rejuvenated each day through proper nutrition, sleep, frequency medicine, and many unconventional methods of self care. I'm Jody Susan. Join me and my amazing guests by calling in at 515-605-9325 and press 1 to speak. We'll help you achieve a breakthrough in your health today. Have you ever dreamed of going to exotic places, meeting fascinating people, enjoying uplifting music, and spending nights in a luxurious hotel? Do you look forward to a relaxing vacation where you can walk along the beach or sit in a quiet park and enjoy the sunset or sunrise? Whether you're flying around the world or driving across the country, we will share travel tips that will help you stay safe while you enjoy the journey. Join me every third Saturday of the month, 12 noon to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, and move around with Deborah here on the Female Solutions Show. Call in and comment 
515-605-9325 and press 1 to speak. Hi, I'm Naima Latif. Join me and my co-host Kareem Hamid every Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the Female Solution Radio Show as we explore that relationship that is the foundation for our society, the relationship between men and women, husbands and wives. Join our discussion as we seek to repair broken family ties and rebuild our community. Listen online at www.blogtalkradio.com slash the dash female dash solution. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak to our host. Or you can join us live on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash the female solution. Oh, you 
to deal with with honey and said, well, honey sounds a lot better. So ever since then, and this is just recently, I started dealing with a lot of stuff with honey, just as a smile, be the best person I could be. And it got me thinking, you know what? I want to help other veterans in the same situation so they don't feel the way I felt, how I felt, or how my job was mistreating me. I said, you know what? Never, never do I want anybody to feel that way. So I want to be the advocate for that veteran or civilian, inspiring civilian, and say, you know what? I got your six. That means I got your back in the uh, army or military lingo. And then basically, that's what I've been doing. I started creating the Chicago Land Veterans Facebook group. I started volunteering with different organizations, different non for profits. One of them being uh, the Mission Continues. It's a non for profit nationwide. They got what's called platoons. And in these platoons, they have events. Like one of the recent events we were. Um, at the Foon Bank um, down on the south side on East 76th Street. I don't recall the actual address, but we were preparing boxes of food to give out to the homeless. It was an awesome event. I took my whole family with me. In the beginning, it was just me going by myself. You know, that was the most recent one. Now, every time there's a Mission Continues um, mission event, we go as a family because that makes me feel happy that my family had my back, they had my six. And that makes me a very proud dad, you know, as and also a very proud veteran. And it helps me cope with the everyday life. So I started doing the Chicago Land Veterans Group where I post anything and anywhere happening in Illinois. I put jobs, I put uh, events that are happening in the area. Something where a veteran could go and, like me, how I felt like I didn't have nothing, I, didn't, I felt like I didn't have no one. That way now a veteran, if it's in your area, oh, check it out. Chicago Land Veterans just posted an event in Makanda, Illinois. You know where Makanda is? It is south. It's in southern Illinois. And they have a project there called Project Die Hard where they've been gifted 20 acres of land so that way they could be able to house veterans there. As you can see, some of the locals that have it in the background, they're the ones with the one saluting called Project Die Hard. Very great organization. You know, they have every once a month, every second Saturday of the month, they have what's called a volunteer day, you know. So I started doing this type of stuff, and I started feeling, you know what? I told myself, Victor, this is how you used to be before going to war. You were a very motivated person, and it's helping me to get back to that person. I might not be able to be the same person, but you know what? I'm Victor 2.5 or 3.0, where I still have my issues. I still have my struggles, but I don't let that overtake me, you know, because... I met so many great people. I met you, Zelda. I, you're very inspirational. Everything that you're doing, you don't know how inspirational you are to others. You're very inspirational to me. I want to let you know. Thank, thank you very you. much for doing all that you do. Thank and you. I tell people that they don't know the full impact of what they do from other people. You might not see yourself as inspirational, but other people see you and you give them hope. And mm. with all the people I met, uh, Rogelio Vila from the Mission Continuum, Zestin Navala, Rolando, you know, Oscar from the MVP, which MVP is merging vets and players. They're for combat veterans and pro athletes, where we work out every Wednesday, you know, at the POW gym around Jackson and Racine. And then afterwards, we have what's called a peer to peer support group, where we talk about our issues, our struggles, where there is there is no uh, thinking negativity. It's all positivity, you know, and it's a great organization. And they also do events. You know, the first event I, I went with MVP was at the Bears actual training site up north. And the hottest hall. It was awesome. We worked out for an hour. And then we were able to eat with some of the rookies of the Bears. And that was like, oh, this, that was awesome. Oh, wow. And I did that day because <laughs> I ate really good because I <laughs> use food. As a tool, I always say, when you eat something good, it makes the walls work away for that little minute, you know? Oh. Of, of food. And then I was able to take home some food for my daughters because I feel bad when I go to this event and they're, they're feeding us. My daughters are like, oh, how could you? You know, you didn't invite us, Papa. And they don't worry, oh. I got us to go click. They were able to give me some food to go home. And then they eat that for lunch, and I don't feel bad. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. all, all this started... Um, because of my job where I turned it into a positive. I'm still dealing with the struggles at my job, but you know what? I'd rather be doing what I'm doing now full-time, but that's something maybe in the future. When I retire, I will do this full-time, you know? But then I'll create what's called Chicagoland Veterans Community, 
for an aspiring civilian and everyday person, there, I'm posting jobs there because it's not only for veterans. We're talking about as we come back as veterans, yes, we're broken. We're trying to piece together the, the pieces, but we have to lead by example. So I created the Chicagoland Veterans Community page, and I'm always posting jobs. There are a lot of organizations, a lot of um, Facebook um, groups that share jobs. So I take at least two or three hours a day in my time to just start posting on, copying these, putting all these in one page. So it'll be a one-place source. You know, people can also go to the other places I share so they, if they want to follow them as well to do so. You know, and that's what these pages are, and it's so awesome. There's just so much out there, and sometimes I hear a lot, Big you're doing too much. You got to step it down a bit, you know? Really? I, I, and then I don't know how to step it down. You know, I'm just so used to just doing it. And, and just so I won't be in the negative and think about the bad stuff at my job, I do this full time where I don't I don't get any sleep as it is because that's one thing I struggle with sleep. Oh, oh, my yeah. say me like I don't know how you function at times. You know, she tells me because I I sometimes I only get like half an hour of sleep. There've been times I've been up 72 hours where I only slept like maybe half an hour. You know, throughout those three days. Really? But, uh, yeah. And, and then I knock out. Like yesterday, I had a meeting with this one other veteran to do like a workout program, and I fell asleep, you know, because of my diabetes. I'm like, I just knocked out once I sit down on the couch, unfortunately. You, did you? Did, going on. <laughs> did I hear you? Did I hear you say that you were a diabetic? I am diabetic, and that's one of the things I struggle with as well. Well, you don't have to struggle anymore, young man, because there is a website that you could go to. Not a website. It's a, a blog that I made because I was a diabetic, and it's okay. called DiabeticDonut.com. Okay, if, nice. If you download that free, I'm not charging anything. Somebody shared it with me, and I'm sharing it with the world. Okay. You see me drinking this every morning, and they think I'm drinking some coffee. No, I'm drinking this this juice that consists of apple, beet, cucumber, lemon, ginger, kale, and turmeric. Seven ingredients, and I make it every morning. I was so disappointed this past Saturday. I get up to make my juice, and beets are really, really tough. So you have to slice them small. But in a Vitamix, you don't have to do that. Well, I got up Saturday morning, and my Vitamix quit. So I was like, well, how am I supposed to get my juice? How am I supposed to do this? So I had to go buy a bullet, a ninja bullet, because I need very sharp blades because I got very, I got to put ginger in there. I got to put too many. You got to cut all that stuff up. But anyway, long story short, there is no excuse for diabetes. And the reason I, how I know that many of the diseases that we have, Victor, are from a lack of nutrition. Yes, I believe that too. We eat all this meat that seeps in our skin and our and our skin and our and our organs, and it slows us down and it poisons us. Because when an animal is killed, they know that they're going to be killed, and they release a poison, and we're eating that poison. And I'm not 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 knocking people who eat meat because I eat meat, but I'm just making you aware of how you how I feel. I went to a football game last night. Football game. Uh, what do you call it? Um, the playoffs or something they played last night. And everybody there is eating and having a good time. But I noticed after we sat for a while, we're seniors, so you know it's kind of you know you get up, you're a little stiff. That's because that poison has settled in our joints. And it's making us lethargic and a host of other things. So I just, you know, I digress, but I had to share that. So please go to DiabeticDonut.com and I will, start I will. drinking that. And thank you for sharing that. It is my honor because somebody shared it with me. I just added a little something, something to it and made it available for everybody. So please go there and tell all your friends. So it's free. I don't ask for anything. Just go there and make that every day. Make that every day and watch your numbers go down. My numbers went down from... Seven five to five seven. What does that tell you? So it's possible. So, and you no longer have diabetes. You are flushing it out with your vegetables. So thank you so much for sharing that. And for anybody else that's watching, if you're watching, it's seven fifty one. You're listening to uh, Victor Sarmiento, veterans helping veterans. And I'm honored to be able to have him here and to help him today because I didn't know you were diabetic. How long have you been a diabetic? 
for June. Uh, in Berkeley, Illinois, it's going to be, it's called Spring Into Summer Fest, where it's going to be a free event for the community come in Berkeley and surrounding. Any, anybody could attend this festival. We're going to have music all day. We're going to have uh, vendors, you know, we're going to have volunteers, and hopefully you can find somebody to, to sponsor the food for the volunteers, you know, because I would like, I, I love food, and I know everybody else loves food, mm-hmm. but hey, we can get some food for volunteers, it'd be awesome. It'll make the day go by quicker, you know, rather than wait to the end to get some eat. We'll have food there for volunteers. I think we have the Boy Scouts and River Grove that are going to be volunteering and helping out. So it's going to be a fun event. You know, there's a lot of things. This will be our first event, and hopefully next year we'll make it into a three-day event with a carnival, and it'll be a lot of um, informational booths as well. We've got a uh, Project Die Hard from Macon, Illinois. is going to come up. He's going to provide information to the families and veterans about what they're doing in Macon, where they want to house veterans. You know, so that's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to them to coming over here. I was supposed to be there this last Saturday, and everything, but because I was doing something else and I wasn't able to pay for the, it, 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 to go to Macaulay, do you drive? That's five and a half hours. Whoa. Or you can take the train. I tried driving and oh, and I took my, my 16 year old son with me and it was rough. I had the tendency when I'm driving long period of times and this is always one issue when I was in the military, it, was, it always hit my head and I would fall asleep in long route. So I had to drive maybe an hour or two and that's it max. Anything afterwards, I start getting tired and everything, <laughs> headaches. So on the way back, that same night after we volunteered, we, we, I got uh, great footage on the Chicagoland Veterans Group and the Chicagoland communities. I have some great footage of that day where I interviewed Brian Gibson from the Project Die Hard and he told about what the mission entailed. But coming back home, it took us 12 hours to get back because I was getting so tired and I couldn't drive all the way because my son, I don't want to end up crashing. So it was like, whoa, but we made it home the next day at 7 in the morning. We left at 7 p.m. Saturday, got back 7 a.m. the next morning on Sunday because I would have to pull over, drive on the side, knock out for a little bit. So what I decided to do for the next month, which was in January, I decided to take the train, the Amtrak. Okay. And it was a lot more convenient. Less I was able to <laughs> And this was the first time meeting me being on Amtrak. And it was awesome. It was very spacious. Not love that Amtrak. Love it. Love it. Love it. I would, oh. I'd rather take Amtrak than, than fly. I really would. <laughs> exactly. And I'm going to be going to Amtrak because they got these organizations in different parts of Illinois where they got events for the veterans. I'm just going to show up. And I show up. I videotape. I record. I document. You know, and I share the, the experience with other veterans in the hopes that they also get out of the rut that we're in. It was sometimes, like for me, it's always been a hermit, stuck at home, and my family, my kids are the ones that struggle with it because we go outside for 10 minutes in the summertime. We're like, okay, 10 minutes, and I get my anxiety kicks in. I say, you know what, let's go back in, let's go back in, and we go in. And to this day, one of my daughters, my one of my youngest daughters, doesn't know how to ride a bike <laughs> because, you know, I will, it will get so bad until... 2022, a lot of, or 2020, a lot of things been changing that got me thinking, you know what, we gotta, I gotta do something. We can't be living like this, you know, because it's affecting my kids. I don't want them to have anxiety issues or any type of other issues, social issues. You know, I want them to be happy, you know, and that's why I get the help at the VA. You know, I actually gotta be there at 11 a.m. today for my, uh, we have a a talk with the veterans, a motivational um, um, class where we try to get help, you know, um, substance abuse, help as well, um, because a lot of our veterans are taking their lives, and it's unfortunate that it's happening. But we, we talk about 22 push-ups, but really doing 22 push-ups is not really making an impact. Yes, it's bringing awareness, but what we really need is we need to find the individual veteran. Why is it that they're struggling and try to help them in that nature? Mm. Like for me, I wish there was somebody that could intervene with my job and say, hey, what you're doing to this veteran, this employee is not right. Can you please stop because it's affecting him greatly where it comes home and it affects the home and that's how bad it is. So we need to pinpoint what are the actual concerns of the veteran that, that's making them feel this way and it's helping them. They're not going to be cured, but at least that's a start. And, and that's why um, there's a church on Madison, California. We're doing what's called a, a peace circle. 
world where it's a it's a veteran talk and we talk about these issues and there's no judgment and this is going to be i want to say tuesday once i get the flyer i'm going to post it out there uh, for veterans but then we're also going to do another peace circle for um the general public because we could all we all have a struggle right? right so why not let's talk about it and let's try to see how we could overcome it by talking you know Right, absolutely. You are right on time. So communication is key, and that's why we have to communicate right now and take a quick break, and we'll be back talking to Victor Samianto, our very own veterans, helping veterans stay close. Share this video with somebody as we go to commercial break, and thank you for sharing. Come on, technical difficulties. Don't show up because we got control. What happens when a group of people are kidnapped from their homes, smuggled away in chains, and held captive in a foreign land where they are tortured, raped, and forced to perform hard labor by the lash of a whip and under the constant threat of death? Slavery, the African-American psychic trauma. What happened to the doctors, writers, scientists, builders, educators, and spiritual leaders from Africa's golden age? Who did they really capture and sell into slavery? Are all African Americans suffering from psychic trauma because of a conspiracy to hide their true identities? Do you have psychic trauma? Take the test on page 22 of the book and see. Order it online today at www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimahlatif.com and get your personally autographed copy of the book, Slavery, the African-American Psychic Trauma. Do you want to live in a world without war? Join our global peace movement. Heavenly Culture World Peace Restoration of Light transcends culture, religion, ideology, and other boundaries to achieve a peaceful harmony and the global society. HWPL is committed to bringing world peace and cessation of war through peaceful dialogue between religious groups. I am Director Shin Suk Kim of the HWPL Chicago branch of North America. Join us for our next gathering. Call 773-580-1501 
and be a part of the movement for world peace. Email us at chicagohwpl at gmail.com. here on the Female Solution on the and the Higher Learning Network TV show, which airs Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19 and 24-7 on the World Wide Web. We are joined here today with our very own veteran helping veterans, and that would be Victor Sarmiento. Thank you, Hello. Thank you so much for joining us back here on the Female Solution. You are such a blessing in disguise because I had no idea that there was so much trauma for soldiers once they get home. And you are a a, a wonderful resource because just, just like you didn't know, like your uncle told you, you tell somebody else and and so on and so forth. So thank you for the work that you do because you're an inspiration as well. You may not know it and you may not think it, but there are people who are counting on you. And and this uh, 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 organization, uh, Chicagoland Veterans Helping Other Veterans, that is uh, that's awesome. That is all. That is. I'm I'm so glad to be to know that this is available. Because these are the kinds of resources that we need. To keep us in the know. Yeah, yes, um, thank you very much, Zelda. And like I said, um, that's what just one, but this is like, um, like I said, for, for the veterans, we don't talk about it because we're very prideful, you know, yeah. we're very um, conservative with, with how we feel because we feel sometimes speaking up, we're not a man or we're not a woman, right. you know, and we don't talk about this stuff, you know, because we don't want to know. We've got to be tough, we got to be hard for the mission because. We want to be able to, no matter what's going on, we get taught in the military, and I'm, and I'm just speaking for the Army, but it's always across the board, all the other military, all the branches. We get taught that the mission comes first no matter what. You know, especially they teach us, we got to be mentally strong and physically strong, more mentally than anything, so we can handle whatever comes at us. So whatever feelings we may have, we have to battle that up, and the mission comes first because we got to be at our very top, top of our game when we go and we're in these places, you know, because it's, it's, it's like um, an, uh, it's from life and death. We don't know what the outcome may come, but we have to be mentally strong to handle that and not break, you know. And it's right. not easy. You got, you know, 19 year olds that are are come in 18, 19 years right out of high school. You know, they're getting taught, you know, to be a, a soldier, a marine, an airman, wherever it may be, you know, and to get sent to war, you know. And it's like it's, it's a scary thing. Yeah. I would, would love my, my children to experience it, but if they decide it's their path, I have to respect that, you know. But, yeah, I, I remember when I, I got so many videos, which I'll probably share with you once I find them. i got to find a, a camcorder that has the mini TV tapes, and I have a lot of footage being over there where I had to say goodbye. I would do what's called a goodbye video, stating um, at that time I was married, so I would tell my wife, I love you, I love my dad, my parents, my sisters, my daughters, that if uh, something happens, you know, uh, I just want you to know that I love you. I'm going to go outside, we got this mission, you know, I'm going to do my best to come back home, and if something happens, I'm going I'm to die fighting, you know, I'm not going to let them take me, you know, but this is the stuff they get prepared when you go outside the wire, outside the base or camp that you're at, you know, you got to be mentally strong so that way you don't break when you're out there. Because you gotta not only you gotta look out for yourself, you gotta look out for your teammates, your fellow soldiers right. as well. And then um, sometimes when we come back, like I said, we come back, we still have our mentality as a mission. But what is the mission now? Our families. We gotta provide for our families. Some of us might not have a family, so the mission is then themselves to um, get the help they need, so they could go ahead and, and live a normal life. Where you know, and it's harder. It's easier said than done. You know. Right. It's always easier said than done because uh, doing the work is crucial. It is imperative because somebody has to do it. We cannot wait on this health care, as it is referred to, sick care, 
system that we live in because everything they give us is just it, it it's not for our best interest, I'll put it like that. Exactly. So we, so we gotta and, do the work. Go ahead. Yeah. And it's like not like rocket science, you know, when I came back I came back where I see things differently, I see the world differently. And to me it it's very upsetting that we have uh, political, uh, I don't like politics, I don't like talking politics because politics are easy. All you have to do in politics is lead by example and basically provide for the citizens living in this country, you know. It's, it's not rocket science. You provide them a good job, training, you provide them the resources needed. I remember playing this one game growing up called Sin City where we would basically have to build a city and also we got to make the citizens of the city happy. And how would they do that? By providing places for them to work, by providing them resources like water and food and all that type of stuff. And more importantly, education. Because you want a society of free thinkers. You want a society, uh, an educational society that they're going to go ahead and once they learn what they learn, they're going to be a great actual citizen and they're going to become the leaders of tomorrow, either scientists, doctors, lawyers, and bring innovation into the city. And that's why you have to invest into the citizens. And it starts from the, gr- from the ground up. You know, like right now, if you look at it, I, I, I heard many things about these schools being closed down. Why can't we turn those schools into homeless shelters? We can. You know? We can. But, but nobody's doing it. You know, I know there are some organizations, like I met this one um, gentleman, um, Don Dottie. He has an organization that I'm, I'm trying to work with where I had like a, there was a, a Zoom meeting and there was other veterans there. We were talking about this. How can we help each other out? I'm on a phone chat group with them and they're, they're, they're collaborating. Just like um, the pastor of the Lutheran Church on Madison, California, uh, Mr. George Steele, very great guy. He wants to do a lot in the community. We're going to start with the peer, uh, peer, peer support group with the Peace Circle there on Tuesdays for the veterans, and then we're going to do it for, for women as well and um, the regular civilians and uh, citizens. So it will be an awesome place where you could come and we talk about what our struggles are and how we could overcome them by just talking about it, you know, providing the resources needed as well if needed. But first thing you have to talk about it. It's not an easy thing. It's hard, you know. Just like how my fiance, she lost her son. It was due to the father killing him. Unfortunately, it's a sad thing, and she had to overcome that. And that's what interested me when I when I was in my dark place. I happened to see a post on social media on this site called Mi Gente. It no longer exists, but it was a social media platform. And I read a poem that she wrote about her son, how what happened and how she overcame it. Well, not technically overcoming it, but how she was there for her first child because she was still needed. She couldn't give up because her son would not want her to give up. So she had to get that strength from within to basically try to move forward and to this day she still struggles because losing a child that's something you can't forget no. and then the trauma that you're going to have until the day you you pass on and then you could be again with your child you know mm-hmm. so you got to do the best you can and that's what I, what more I, I, I was inspired by her and what i respected mm-hmm. and that, that drew me to her you know mm-hmm. so yeah there's stuff like that going on everywhere we got to realize it's not just us so it's just trying to treat people right yeah. you know and that's what we're doing, you know, we're out here. There's so many organizations, if people just collaborate and they all accomplish their missions by collaborating, you know, we all got the same mission, even more people working on the same mission one after the other. I heard stories of when um, immigrants come over from India, they open up, they all live in one house, and then they open up their own, like, either restaurant or gas station, and they all live in that house, and they're like, okay, yep. we're all going to make it. You know, they have a strong bond, and they know that they want to be there for their family, so they open up a business. They all work there. All of them work there. They all they want. So they, they, they succeed. Okay, now we'll open another business for the next person. Yep. You know, but the, the main thing is they're collaborating, and it works, you know. And you have got the right idea because, I, I have seen that in action, and I see how it works, and I see how it it keeps a bond, a sense of community. 
you may not have what you need, but you're in a community of others that may have what you need. Yes, yes, and that's the great thing about that, because that's one thing I love about the military community, that I've learned that I might not have my six, which is my back, you know, I might not take care of myself in some aspects, but I'm, I'm taking care of another veteran, and, and it's like a cycle, you know, somebody in that group is taking care of me, and thinking about me, and say, hey, Victor, you need to get older, and get up, stop being in the, you know, the press mode that you get sometimes, because I do get into my depressed mode. You know, people see what's on the outside. I got a picture that somebody just took of me, Oscar from MVP, we're at an event, and it, I look so happy. I had the best smile, and I'm like, wow, I look happy in that picture. But the reality, and I posted this on social media, you, you see what's on the outside, but you don't see what's on the inside. No. The reality, I'm just holding on to a string on the edge, you know, yeah. just trying to keep hope alive, and that's all I could do a everyday struggle, you know, and the good thing is, I do have a good support system, I do have many inspirations from all aspects, you know, and that's what's keeping me here, and like, there's plenty of work, there's a lot of work to do, just yesterday, my car broke down, and, um, oh man, it's like a, I, I shouldn't be driving it, but hey, that, you, that's all I got, you know, so I went and uh, went to the actual uh, buyer's flea market to look for vendors, on the, I went on the bus, I took my daughter, my, my youngest, and um, I went to look for vendors for this event because, you know, I want to make it, I want to succeed. And I know it's going to take a lot of work, and I got um, George Correa, he's uh, part of the Sons of the Legion because his dad was actually a veteran, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sorry, we're, we're dog sitting to, uh, tomorrow's the last day. Yeah. And it's a lot of work, but when dog is sitting, I never had a dog dog. But, um, so he's a great guy. He's helping out. And Peter from the Berkeley Park District is also helping out. You know, Peter Graham, great guy. So teaching all three of us. We're all organizing this event. So I'm doing my part over there. I actually got, uh, uh, it's going to be English music. It's going to be Spanish music. You know, there'll be a lot of music. The dog is excited. That's why he's barking. He's like, That's yeah, why you, know, need, you need to grab that dog and bring him on the screen. So to acknowledge him, because he's going to bark. what it is. I didn't realize that. that dog, that's what he wants. He he's wants communicating. To Bring him on the screen so he can so we can see him. There he is. <laughs> he's not my. Oh. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be yours. He wants acknowledgement, so let's give him. A, what's his name? His name is Kovu. Kovu. Uh, Hi, Kovu. Yeah, Kovu. Hi, yeah, Kovu. And, um, he's an awesome dog. You know, he's. I think he's like a Yorkie, but he's like a, a mutated Yorkie because he's like big. I never seen a Yorkie this big. And neither have I. <laughs> So he's like a mix, but he's pretty cool. And I never learned, I never knew how calming it could be having a dog near you because he, and that's what I like about him. I don't know why he stands next to me, sleeps on me, uh-huh. and all sorts of stuff. See, because you, you know? were ignoring him. You see how when you put him in your lap, he got quiet. You see that? Yes, yes. He's and like, then he ran off because we got cats. Yeah. And then the cats <laughs> Because they get up on everywhere. When I have a house, hopefully if I could ever afford a house, we're going to have a cat sanctuary. It's going to be a room with a window. And all the cats are going to be in there. So when you want cat therapy, you go into the room, and they won't leave hair throughout the rest of the house. Oh, wow. Somehow, the hair gets everywhere. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, but like I was saying about the dog, um, this is one thing I never knew was so calming because they can sense yes. when, when you're not feeling well, when yes. you're anxiety and depressed, and they come up to you and they comfort you. Right. So I'm looking into maybe getting into getting a, a, a service dog because I, I do qualify for one because they do make me feel very calm and relaxed when my anxiety levels are out of control, my depression is out of control. Having this dog is very calming, and I'm like he's just sleeping. I'll be sleeping on the couch. He just sleeps on me. And just something about that bond and just having him near me is so relaxing. You know, I'm like, man, and, and I feel like he understands me. He does. He does. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's like, there's, a many, there's many organizations. One is the Hinsdale Humane Society. Um, they uh, have a, a service dog training for veterans. They have a great veterans program. You know, Andrea, I'm not sure what the last name is, but I have it on my Facebook, and I'm always sharing the stuff about the Hinsdale Humane Society. And then they also have another one called Canine for Veterans, uh, Zach Zett. Z-E-T-T. Mm-hmm. He's another uh, 
awesome veteran. I'd I be able to call him, and he told me, Victor, whenever you want to talk, just call me. Like, who does that, you know? Right. And I called him, and I told him, hey, Zach, um, thank you, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Because not that many people in the world give you the time and day to, to, to let you talk and just to listen. No, they you know, won't. what I think is very important. Yes. If, some, if somebody calls you, just listen, just, just for a minute or two. So that way, it's going to help them cope with what they're coping at the time. Because you never know, they might not have that person to talk to or might not open up and they feel comfortable talking to you, you know? Right. So, yeah, so that canine for veterans. And there was another one, um, which I can't remember, but I just met the guy. Um, his name is Tony. Um, I want to say Tony Eaton. Mm-hmm. And um, he's down near Maconda, around that area in the southern Illinois. Mm-hmm. also has a great training program for veterans and service dogs. <clears throat> and when you, I would like for you when this call is over sometime today, uh, I always post information resources not only on uh, your, on um, Veterans Helping Veterans, but on Chicagoland Veterans, but it'll be on our blog as well. So they can well, always okay. check. Email you those links. Yes. That'd be awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that because and, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yes, yes sir. And before you go, it's 822. we got a few more minutes. So we want to take some calls. People might have questions. We're going to go to the phone lines if you want to call in. 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak. As we go to 773-977, you're live on the Female Solution. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Uh, good morning. This is Lois here in Chicago, Illinois. I'm Hello. calling... Hi, I'm calling regarding uh, veteran Troy Donahue Trask. Troy Donahue Trask was a homeless veteran, apparently living down on Wacker Drive, and was frostbitten and taken by the Women's uh, Health Organization to the hospital. And from being homeless in the tent, the veteran Troy Donahue Trask, who was evicted due to the um, building construction for Obama at the, um, in that area and became homeless. And when he was frostbitten, the homeless relief uh, force picked him up off the street, put him in the hospital. Uh, he was unable to walk, but they gave him an apartment and paid for his apartment um, for up until he just passed away uh, legally January 20, 2023. And he was homeless uh, for quite some time, I understand. And this is my brother that I'm talking about, Troy Donahue Trask. And I took all of the information to the funeral home for his DD2, they claimed for a burial, what have you. And right now, Steel's funeral home won't even tell me where my brother's going to be buried. They claim they can't get a DD214, and they've treated him so badly and sent a guy calling himself a soldier to my brother's services on February 4th and stood there and said, oh, I'm representing Obama and what have you. And Obama caused him to be homeless. And, you know, and he wasn't even a soldier. I understand that he didn't even serve a year, and his name is uh, Sylvester Hendricks. He never served a, a, a two months in the service. He had the nerve to give to talk about some Obama and him with his hands hanging off of him like he's a hoodlum or something. He's a dirty soldier. So anyway, I need the DD-214. For my brother, Troy Donahue Trapp, so we can get him the military burial that he deserved after he suffered so much in this city of Chicago. And for Seal's funeral home to do this and just mess over my brother after he's already been messed over and allow a dirty soldier to come in and represent Obama at my brother's services. I just need help, please. Please. Somebody help me bury my brother, please. Please. Our heart is with you, uh, Lois. Thank you so much for calling. And um, I will put you in touch with uh, Victor, and maybe Victor can give you some resources. Most definitely. It would be nice to talk. Uh, unfortunately, my, my, that's one of the things. My hearing is bad. <laughs> so i got to concentrate very much. And um, I couldn't quite hear, but most definitely, if you could get in contact with me, um, I would love to talk to you and see how we can help each other out. You know, and um, I, I did hear that your, your brother passed away. I'm sorry for that because that's a, that's another federal brother, you know, not here, you know. And we're all like a, a brotherhood, a sisterhood when it comes to veterans. And it's very sad when I hear, you know, somebody passing away. And uh, but most definitely, um, please reach out to me. Um, Zelda will, will, will send my information. 
call away. Right. Uh, Lois, I, I think I have your number. Uh, if I don't, Naima has it. No, my number is 773-977-4498. That's 773-977-4498. And thank you so much. I just need help. Please and pray for me, everybody, please. I just want to bury my brother. He's been homeless a long time, and his own brother didn't care about him or nothing. And everybody knows that the, the Women's Relief Organization, we need to we need to uh, commend people. And like yourself, Zelda, I've been trying to get in touch with you, Zelda, for over a week. I, I didn't have your number. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, I got it now, and I'm going to lock it into my phone. And then, like I said, after this here, um, around, I want to say 920, I'll give you a call, Lois, if that's okay. Did you, did you hear it all? Any time, 24-7, any time. Okay. All right, thank you so much for calling, thank Lois. You. Our prayers are with you, my dear, and, and, yeah. and know that your love and your brother's death will not be in vain, just like uh, you. He will not be forgotten at all. No, he will not. We will see to that. And uh, it is 827. Victor has to leave at 830. We got three minutes. We got time for one more call. Uh, 312671. You're live on the Female Solution Grand Rising. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And what's your comment? Thank Seven. you. Way on your shalom. Assalamu alaikum. This is Brother Plump, Robert Floyd Plump, and uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. And I uh, wanted to ask Victor a question. Did he know that Mayor Harold Lee Washington was a veteran, a uh, World War II veteran? What was that question? Because, I, 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 like I said, I'm very hard of hearing, and I'm trying to listen in. What was the question, Zelda? Uh, did you know that Harold Washington was a veteran? Former yeah. Mayor Harold Washington. Yes, 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 he was and everything. And I love going to the actual Harold Washington Library because I work out of downtown. And I like going up to, I think, it's the ninth floor. They have this awesome, awesome area to sit down and I can sit there. But, yes, I knew he was, he was a veteran. Right. Well, I wanted to uh, also extend, I am uh, the President Robert Flora Trump of the Harold Washington uh, Foundation. And I wanted to extend the invitation uh, to uh, do a collaboration under the umbrella of the Hell Russian Foundation dot info, and we would uh, like to get your telephone number, uh, Chicago Helping Veterans, and also uh, uh, United for Veterans. Thank you. That, that that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yes, I could provide you my number and everything. Um. How can I communicate with? with I'll um, give it to him. I'll give it to him. Okay, so show um show give me your, your your information, sir, and then I'll go ahead and reach out to you right after this as well, and I can go ahead and share my number with you. Okay, okay. So I'll 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 get his uh his well I have his number. Uh, I'll send it to you at um uh, when the show is over, Mr. Plum. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you so much, Chief. Yeah. God bless you, uh, Zelda, and uh, also Mr. Victor. We love you. Keep up the good work. Uh, yeah. Leaving no veterans behind and no veterans left. Uh, and uh, uh, can you can you repeat? I want to say thank you and I appreciate you. You know, because like I said, that that I needed that today. Because every day there's always something I need to inspire me and it's my family and it's my family. And now today is you. And I just want to say that thank you very much. I greatly appreciate that. And well, thank you for your I could be able to do it and, and as, a, as a person that you should keep helping others. All right. <laughs> thank you for your service and all the veterans for their services, too. Amen. And we do, uh, uh, Amen. Zelda, we do help the homeless uh, veterans, too. So we're yeah. going to do a collaboration with a community support group and that we all can work together. Praise Amen. The Lord. Thank you for your service. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Minister Robert Floyd Plump. It's eight thirty one. We gotta take our last break and I know you gotta leave, Victor, so you wanna give us uh um closing thoughts information before you leave. Well, I just wanna say thank you to everyone and, and always be kind. Always um treat others the way you wanna be treated because you never know what situation someone might be. So 
as long as you treat everything with kindness, you can't go wrong. You know, and always with a smile. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, you know, but we just got to keep hope alive. And mm -hmm. I, I, I tell everybody, keep hope alive and just stay positive and the rest will follow. Amen. And if they want to contact you, how can they do that? Uh, yeah. If you want to contact me, you can contact me with the Chicagoland Veterans Group and also the Chicagoland Veterans Community Group as well. I have uh, my information on there. And um, on, on the actual on the video of this, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, put the links as well in there so that way it shows you how to contact me okay. as well. And also, I could give you my email. My email is chicagolandveterans.com. executive producer of the Female Solution Global Radio TV Show. We are a part of the online network of Associated Internet Radio hosts, On Air. On Air empowers you with transformative news and interactive radio TV shows. This is such a wonderful time to be alive and to see our human family coming together as one community as a result of that powerful tool, the Internet. We can now talk directly to each other all over the world. There's no need for conflict or misunderstanding. There's no need for violence to solve our differences. We can talk to each other face-to-face -face until we reach an agreement. On Air offers a fantastic global guide to communicators from all over the world who are using their Internet platforms to inspire us to strive to be our best selves in order to become the kind, compassionate, loving people we were all born to be. Once we do that, we'll see planet Earth transformed into a place of peace. Subscribe to the recommended YouTube channels, Facebook pages, and podcasts created by these Voices of Enlightenment. On Air provides daily news briefs and a weekly magazine to keep you abreast of events and opportunities. On-air news affiliates in television, radio, and print share information, insight, and interviews with notable personalities. Go to onaireverywhere.com for a daily dose of uplifting news. 
We're on air everywhere, online, all the time. Hi, this is John Alexander. And I'm Naima Latif. Meet people like you who are making a positive difference in the world. Big difference. Watch us every day on The Media Connection at www.youtube.com slash The Media Connection TV. YouTube it. We'll see you soon. There are people who choose to make a positive difference in the world. Our job is to bring you their stories to motivate you to do the same. Join us each week, host John Alexander and Naima Latif, as we bring you the educators, entertainers, elected officials, religious leaders, and community activists whose works are transforming this world. Find out how you can make a difference, too. Be inspired. Watch the Media Connection. Mondays at 5 p.m. and Tuesdays at 12 noon on Cable TV Channel 19 in Chicago. and other cities, check your local cable listings. Do you worry about finances, family, health, jobs, relationships? Are you in pain? Do you feel stuck? If you answered yes to any of these questions, help is available. Don't worry, you're not alone. It's part of the human process. You only feel this way because you haven't mastered the voices in your head. No hype, just down to earth, solid, workable tools and techniques that you can practice daily. It's really food for the soul. Whether you want to learn how not to worry about anything, reverse type 2 diabetes, publish a book, promote your product or service, or just make extra money. To take advantage of the deal of the day, Go to zeldaspeaks.com or call 312-409-6619. Mention promo code The Female Solution and get free shipping. That's zeldaspeaks.com or 312-409-6619. Stop worrying today. Visit zeldaspeaks.com. Hi, I'm Dr. CJ of Valona Health, where we combine orthopedic manual therapy and neuroscience to treat the whole person. Health tip for the day is keep it moving. Doesn't matter how, just keep it moving doing something you enjoy. Walking, dancing, rolling on the floor with your dogs or kids, really anything. The body craves movement to keep the bones, joints, and muscles happy. Even our mental health and internal organs and digestive system rely on our movements. Thanks for being a part of the Higher Learning Network on The Female Solution. What if you could live to be 120 years old and remain active, healthy, alert, and vibrant? Our bodies are made up of cells that are constantly rejuvenating. So if we take proper care of our cells, we can literally defy aging. Join us every Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to learn about self-cell care from Susan Essentials on the Female Solution Blog Talk Radio Show. Learn how to help your body and your cells feel rejuvenated each day through proper nutrition, sleep, frequency medicine, and many unconventional methods of self-care. I'm Jody Susan. Join me and my amazing guests by calling in at 515-605-9325 and press 1 to speak. We'll help you achieve a breakthrough in your health today. Very special guest for you today. I am joined by my bid with buddy. I had no idea that she was even running for office. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our very own Brenda Waters. Woo-hoo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grand rising. So glad to have you here. I know you're busy this morning, and I know you can't stay long because you have responsibilities in the community, and we appreciate that. But That's for right. those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and what's going on in the life of Brenda Waters. Good morning, everybody. The life of Brenda Waters. I am running for fourth district council member. This is a new position that the city has put in place for police accountability. Police accountability. Um, Say that again. Police accountability and public safety. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is very new, so I'm learning. I'm learning to um, going to be learning and training. It is a four-year position. My number is punch number seventy-five first. <laughs> Um, it's ran by districts. 
the districts that I'm running for is four districts. The fourth district entitled, entails seventh ward, tenth ward, and the eighth ward. So that's a big district, you guys. Um, we just really learned about this uh, a little bit, I want to say last year. And again, it's for police accountability. The um, Chicago Alliance has been running, uh, fighting for this for a very long time, mm-hmm. for over 50 years. Mm. Um, and it was just put in place. So it's not just only help for police accountability, but for public safety to feel more safe in your community, you know, for things the police say that they're going to set to serve and protect. This is what we're looking for them to do. Um, you may be hearing a lot now about police accountability and public safety since this is a big election. Um, again, I'm a health care worker. I'm actually at work right now. I've been a health care worker for over 50 years. Mm. I've been advocating for people and patients for a long time. Also a community leader in my community. I grew up in Jeffrey Manor where I have a, lot, a nice little group there. Um, I'm the president of the Friends of Merrill Park. Again, shout out to all the Friends of Merrill Park, the members, the members who first started with me, Joe Addison, my first was Chandra, as well as a lot more people that I can't go name by name. So I thank them all for my support. I thank my being whist players, my skaters, <laughs> my roller skater buddies. So, and I'm just out there. I'm going to be out there keeping my ears to the street. I want to be a listener. I want to work for the community. I want the community to be able to come to me so that we can bring some of these things to the commander of the 4th District and let him know what we're needing in our community. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that um, Dr. Willie Wilson is talking about putting a, a captain in each area, not... Yes just one area. Nobody should have that kind of pet power because you're not going to each and every area. And I do apologize for not uh, giving our audience this information, so let, let me give it to them now. It says, Brenda, a community leader and president of Friends of Merrill Park and the Merrill Pack, excuse me, the Merrill Pack through the Park District has been a resident of the 4th District for over 50 years. You ain't that old. You ain't that old. Quit lying, girl. Anyway. <laughs> And remembers when the 4th District was an eight, was on 89th and Exchange. I remember that. And she's been involved with youth, hosting a back-to-back school outing for family and friends. we got to get together on the youth, too. And friends where school supplies are distributed and also host a coat, uh, hosting a coat giveaway for Christmas during the month of December for over 25 years. Brenda's purpose has always been the community. As a health care worker for over 40 years, the most fulfilling part of the job was being an advocate for the patients. As a council member and advocate for the community, Brenda says, I look forward to assisting in building a stronger connection between police and community, developing community policies, working with the community to get input on policy. See, this is where we need to be involved because the city doesn't give us this. Thank you for saying this. That's right. And ensuring the community commission for public safety and accountability gets input from the community. That's why we need to be involved. We can't wait That's on right. them to do it because they're not going to do it. They've shown us over the last 50 years they're not going to do it. They serve their That's best right. interest, not ours. She says, I have been dedicated to improving the lives of our youth and community for over 40 years, and I look forward to bringing that same passion to the 4th District Council. And her platform is to hold police accountable and improve the mental health of our residents, Punch 75. Yes, thank you, Zelda. I really appreciate you, girl. I love you, girl. <laughs> My honor. You know, just everybody just, you know, support me and praying for me. I feel like this is ordained by me working in the community for so long. He's just pushed me to the next level. Yes, ma'am. So it's really God-ordained. I, um, I serve him. It's not about me. It's not about Brenda Waters at all. It's about the community. It's what we need. Yes, ma'am. They have been fighting for this. Shout-out to Frank Chapman, 
help you feel better. Um, Die for coming. My two running mates. I have two running mates. Oh. Meredith Hammer. And Meredith. Meredith Hammer. She's yeah. been on the show. She's in Indiana, right? Yeah, but she's here back. She's here in Chicago. Oh, well, she, she was in Indiana. Indiana. Yeah, she was in Indiana. Yeah. She's my running mate, so we have the oh, wow. option there. We have diversity. We have Julio Miramontes. He's um, in the 10th ward, which is a big part of the sports district. It's like 85% of the fourth district. Mm. Um, and then again, like I said, it's the 7th ward, 8th ward. And if you guys are in there, we three are running on a slate um, anywhere so it's really big. This area is really big. So we welcome early boat start today, guys. Um, yes. Three locations for us. Don't forget to go out and vote. Yep. Um, today is the big day. The, like, the library is over on 106th on the east side. We have Trumbull Park at 103rd. Um, Crandon, right down the street from the police station. Mm-hmm. And we also have Olive Harvey where you guys can vote if you needed that information for early vote in this area today. So, you know, like I say, I'm looking to do a good job, and I'm looking to make sure that, you know, we can bridge a gap, that we can work together. And another thing that Willie Wilson did say on one of his speaks that we need to have police in our communities that looks like us. Thank you. you don't know us. When I grew up, we had Officer Freddy. Yes. We knew Officer Freddy. Yes. We knew the yes. police that was coming through the park um, who was going to, you know, what they had to say to us and different things. So we knew them when they were coming. <laughs> so we right. were all prepared, Right. You know? But, you know, it starts at home. A lot of stuff starts at home. But when you get the kids to, um, the police to engage with the kids, come into the schools, meet the kids, teach them about you know, public safety, teach them about career be- career building. Yes. Not only should police, you know, come in and teach more about career building, we also have nurses, doctors, radio hosts like my girl Zelda here. We have to get out. We have to, you know, help in our communities. We have to help the children. You can't be get quiet. started before we get there. Got to get involved. Got to get involved. We got to get involved. And you hear people say that all the time, Brenda. Oh, politics, I don't be really bothered with that. Those politics govern your life. You need to be involved. If you don't want to be the face, give it to Brenda or somebody who has the face, who's, who people see. It's your yeah. responsibility not only to your community but to yourself and your family. That's right. To and yourself. I'm out, there. I'm out there, girl. I'm not just in no little hiding one space. So, oh, right. I'm out there. I keep my ears to the street. Again, I want to be the listener. I want to be the voice to go back to the commander of the 4th District and, you know, try to better my community. I live in Jeffrey Matter still, and I grew up there since I was 12 years old. Even when I moved around, I always came back to bring back to the community to make sure, you know, some kids never seen some of the stuff that our group had put together. So our, group, our own community needs a lot of work and a lot of help right now. We have a lot of little different groups in the community, and we all need to try to get together. And it's so, something that can be done. It's it possible. Done. In the words of my mentor, Les Brown, it's possible. All it can possible. be so. done. It <laughs> can right. be yes. done. Yes, we can. Well, punch 75 for the 4th yes. District Council for Brenda Waters, and i got to put this up here on the screen so people can see it. Yeah, and I have a slate. I also have a slate card with Meredith Hammer. Her number is 71, and Julio Mia Montez is 72. I just happen to have, well, we just happen to have that one card for a long time. Okay. So uh, we are running on a slate. Okay, so it's going to be 75, 71, and 72. Yes, because you can vote for three people, so guys, oh. you can go out to vote. You can vote for three people. It's not just because we're a group. Okay. And I think this district is made up of like 23 or 24 different um, districts. Okay. So when you go out to vote, they will be district council member in each district. Okay. And you're allowed to vote for three people. Okay. So and shout out to all of the uh, district council members who are running. I wish everyone well. 
But let's just get together and work together. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to uh, come and share that information with us. So, yeah, I'm at work right now. I work yeah. out at Clinton James. So okay. I get the line and stuff on my Monday. <laughs> okay. I do understand. Well, thank you, Brenda. We appreciate you. Thank Go. you. I yeah. love you, girl. I love you, you right back, you. too. All righty. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Give me a call later. So I sure I will. Share this. Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank yes, you, ma'am. I'll post it on our blog, too, on hln.blogspot.com. Uh, it's in here somewhere. I'll find it and put it up. Don't, but, I, but I'll put it on the Oh, there it is. Uh, so you can find that on our, the updates on our blog, hlntv-blogspot.com. Thank you so much, Brenda. Appreciate you, girl. God bless you, girl. I love you. Love you, too. Play cards. I'm going to play, but I was on that game. Last I understand. Night. I understand. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that game. I was playing me to be with. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm going to beat everybody. I'm going tomorrow because I'm skating. I'm off. Oh. I'm off. So where you going on Mondays? Because I go on Tuesdays. Where you going on Monday? I don't go Monday. Tomorrow is Tuesday, but I'm going to the rink because the rink is open. I mean, oh. it's close to Tempe. Okay. my district. Okay. Thursday, I'm going to do the Glenwood if I can get that. Okay. But I'll meet you wherever. You know, we always meet for how many years? Yes, ma'am. A lifetime. <laughs> a a lifetime. lifetime. That's why I was well, like, okay, you, my girl, Ronnie, we got to get her on the show. Yes, thank you so much, babe. You have a great day, and I hope to see you Tuesday. Thank you so much. God All right. Oh, uh, Love Everybody. you, girl. All right. Peace. Okay. All righty, that was Brenda Waters. You be sure. Brenda Waters, was that the name of an old school group? I can't remember. It's been so long, but I just wanted to share that with you today here on Monday Morning Mindfulness. We were talking about veterans helping veterans, and I've got some comments here that I need to share with you, and it's from Victor. And it says, uh, hello, everyone. Here's the link to one of the social media sites, Facebook.com profiles. And I'll post that in my, uh, on my blog as well. And he also says, this one site for veterans and their families, organizations that help uh, veterans. And that's another one. And I'll post that too. And here he goes. An event, Victor says, I am organizing for Saturday, June 10th. 2023 from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Berkeley Park in Berkeley, Illinois. Further details on the event page and they're looking for sponsors uh, with the Chicago Land Combined Veterans Museum in River Grove, a 501c3. And that's the information, but I'll be posting that there. So expect to see all those updates on my blog on hlntv.blogspot.com. And be sure and join us for the after show, and right now here's an introduction to the after show because I have our very own executive producer of The Female Solution, and that would be the one and only Naima Lissy. Take it away. <laughs> That's my Arsenio Hall presentation, Okay. <laughs>
and I got to make sure I get the drop on anybody that I stop, whether it be a traffic stop or somebody walking down the street. As long as they have that military perspective, we are all in danger mm. because people overreact and they escalate conflict when it's unnecessary. And this has to change, but it means a change in the whole society. So when we come back, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. What are the steps that we need to take to transform the society we're in so we don't have the military police and the citizens being treated like enemy combatants? That's not the relationship we should have. Nope, and it's 8.57, and when we come back, uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about the uh, Chicago Auto Show because I didn't talk about that in length, but I want to talk about it in the after show. So we're going to play the ending, and we're going to start the after show at 9 o'clock. So just hold tight. You'll be Stay here. You'll be glad you did. You can share this video right now as we close. to the end of our show today, but you can hear every show in the archives at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution. You can also hear today's show on the Female Solution Facebook page. Go to www.facebook.com slash the female solution. Leave your comments about today's show. You can always reach me on my website at www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimahlatif.com. Watch our TV shows, listen to our radio shows, order our books, and be sure to get your copy of the book, The Female Solution. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to thank all of you who participated in today's discussion. And to our global family listening from all around the world, we say thank you. To our family in China, Sheshe, India, Zanyaba, Japan, Arigato, Korea, Kamsanida, Russia, Spasiba, Germany, Danke, Poland, John Kujun, France, Merci. Spain, gracias, Italy, grazie, Egypt, shukran, Ghana, medasi, Nigeria, eshe, South Africa, Ngiabonga, Senegal, Jared, Kenya, asante, Israel, toda, Pakistan, shukriya, Afghanistan, Tashakor, Saudi Arabia, Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you, and may peace be upon you and the mercy of God and God's blessings. Continuing with the after show with our executive producer, Naima Latif. And I wanted to bring the board back up, the uh, screen back up. Yes, the she, auto show, which is still going on. Yes. Here at Chicago Action McCormick Place, the largest auto show in the nation. And I, I, there's a little placard um, outside of the McCormick Place that I happen to be reading. It, it's uh, speak of when the McCormick Place was built and I think it was 1971, something like that, the, uh, the intention 
I would love for it to be the world's largest exhibition center to bring these kinds of events. So, you know, there, there was a, a, a economic plan to draw major exhibitions here to the city, and the Chicago Auto Show is one of them. And it's a big deal for all the auto manufacturers because people can come and see what's the latest development in the auto industry. And we know, of course, the auto industry means a whole lot of jobs, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, people are always buying vehicles, so it's a big money flow. A lot of people involved. But one of the things that has been uppermost in people's minds is how do we convert these vehicles that have been emitting small everywhere? How do we convert them to more environmentally friendly kinds of transportation vehicles? And so there was a there was a, an emphasis this year on electric vehicles, EVs they're called, and uh, ways that manufacturers are seeking to bring the cost down, or even hybrids with your you know, partial gas use, partial electric use, and it, it's to our benefit to lessen the small that we're putting in the air. So I had, a, I had a good time with some interviews that we did there. And, of course, the other was gracious enough to also allow on her uh, Friday morning show us to interview Susan Mudd from the environmental uh, organization that has been really pushing for the auto industry to convert cars or, or manufacturers the vehicles as electric vehicles. So uh, this was this was very enlightening and educational and inspiring. We know that when we don't have air, I don't care whatever else hurts on your body, if you don't have air, you ain't going to be here but for about five minutes and then you don't. If that long. If that long. That's, that, that's the and really, like two minutes. If you've ever been underwater and drowning, you know, you don't have air to breathe, you are about to cancel out. Yes, and I had a friend working in the respiratory department of a hospital, and she said, like, I'm the first one that they call. Because if you don't have air, nothing else works. So anything that helps to improve uh, the quality of our air is all of our business. <laughs> Uh, opportunity for us to learn some things about the cars that, that they're manufacturing. And now so many things are, are connected to your cell phone. So that was another yeah. high tech thing. You know, we got these smartphones that really are tracking the bike. You get in right. your car, and if you've been driving a certain place every day, your, your, your car knows where you usually go. Right. And it will give you the, the details of how many minutes it's going to take to get there. And uh, it, it's funny that we have all these devices that know us and, and can explain who we are and know where we're going, connected to, to our, our social media, and connected to, I mean, my car uh, reads my text messages. Yeah, I saw that in your car one day, and I was like, whoa, what kind of car is this, girl? Now, I don't know if I told this story on this show, but if I did, forget me. But when I first got the car, I have a Honda. And the the, the car knows, uh, like, the, because I when I have uh, habitual places that I go, like on Sunday, you know, I was taking my mother to church, so when I got in the car on Sundays, the car would tell me how many minutes to church. Um, and I, I would go to push every Saturday morning, so I'd get in the car, the car would tell me how many minutes before I, you know, get to push on 50s and Drexel. So, I mean, it's this car, it's a smart car, right? And a smart phone. So, uh, one Sunday, one Saturday, uh, the day before, there had been an incident at which a guy had gotten shot near there. And I didn't know at the time, because it was the time I first got the car, I didn't know that the car also read my text messages. So that, you know, you're not reading the phone, you know, because the, the, the car will read them audibly. Right. So I get in the car, and I'm on my way to push. And the car goes, 
Naima, are you going to push today? You know, a guy got shot. Be careful. You know, something like that. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm freaking out because I'm in this car. It's so smart. It knows what's going on. It's just talking to me. knows my name. And I didn't realize that my friend, who, you know, always went to push, had left that text message. <laughs> oh, car- okay. But it scared me so bad. I'm like, oh, my God, this car is alive. <laughs> <laughs>
do all those by keeping our society safer and more friendly. We don't have to fear each other as much because we have access to all kinds of information about each other. And that should help us develop a friendlier, uh, more trusting society. That's, that's my thought on that. You are right on target. And we have uh, places where you can go see them. We've got two on our blog, uh, hlntv.blogspot.com. That one, you know, Google did something with it, and I haven't figured it out yet, so it's not my craziest, it's not my best, but it is available, you know, because you should be able to click on the links. Well, uh, some you might have to copy and paste on this blog. That's why I like my blog better which is zeldaspace.wordpress.com, because on that one you can actually see the link. But you, So you have a choice to go to either one of those and uh, get the information and resources from today's show, because he sent me some other information to post for uh, updates on events and resources for veterans. So please feel free to go to the blog, zeldaspace.wordpress.com. It is nine twelve. Naima, the phones are still lit up. Should we be taking some calls here? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure if, if uh, they've got some comments, we want to give them a chance to express a thought. Five one five six zero five nine three two one. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. Five one five six zero five nine three nine three two five nine three two five. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Seven seven three four three six. You're live on the Female Solution. Hi, who's this? Where are you calling? <laughs> Hallelujah, greeting. Mama D, where's the with Mama D? Hi, Mama D. Well, how are you? Uh, oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for joining us this morning. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I was waiting on uh, to get on uh, WVON, but I have gone to the, t- the two last, Mero- well, not the last two, but I went to the one sponsored by WJCP uh, downtown, and I also attended the the, the one that was um, at Pastor Brooks' church, and I noticed that none of the uh, candidates brought up reparations, and so and, and, and WVON is having a forum, and they don't have reparations on their agenda. But yet, they can have all these sanctuary seekers and sanctuary settlers come over here, like uh, what's happening at Walworth Elementary, the first school I attended when my family moved from down south to up north. And uh, it's right across the street from a senior citizen building. And these hundreds of people have been that, that uh, are black ever since we had the massive school closing on the Renaissance 2010. That was 100 schools closed. And then Ron Emanuel closed 50 at one time. And the United Nations came to Chicago State University and took testimony concerning the police killings of black men and boys, disproportionate arrests, and massive school closing. So they really are, are, are not addressing what we're saying we won't because the, the community has been begging to uh, use these vacant schools that were closed. Most of them, we lost black history because these schools were named after black people, uh, heroes and sheroes like Ralph Bunch, for instance. But anyway, what happened was they have Lori Lightfoot, made an executive order the day after she found out that blacks were dying from COVID at a rate of 72%, Latinos and whites were were dying at a rate of of 17%. They were tired. Asians was dying at uh, 5%. She came up with an executive order guaranteeing 19 COVID-related benefits. One of them included $100 million in small business loans. Each one got a, a, a $1,000 check and 100,000 remote learning devices. That $100 million came from the $868.6 million just in COVID money. And uh, there was other $136 million, uh, $27 million uh, in other funds. 
So uh, Mayor Lightfoot had so much money to play with that the city council voted her the right to spend up to a million dollars without consulting them at all. And that is why she could renovate this building, don't let the community know anything about it, uh, guaranteeing free housing, free food, free rent, free transportation without these people being vetted. Uh, uh, we don't know if they got COVID. We don't know if, if they what their backgrounds are, crooks or dope fiends or rapists. We don't know any of that. But they've just released them into the community. And, and that is one of the 12 reasons why I will not vote for her again to give her a second chance to, to jumpstart over us who are suffering big time and not deal with any of our our concerns. So uh, all of them are for sanctuary settlers. And I said, hey, what about they're for DACA, delayed actions for childhood arrivals, but the childhood is under the age of 31. So we're really not talking about no children. But uh, they're jumping over 400, the black DACA, 400 years of delayed actions for in chains arrival. And none of these candidates are representing us. And it's just uh, uh, like I was told, they had seven, and I'm going to say in, in conclusion because somebody else might want to talk, but there were, I was at the, the two protests, uh, 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 press conferences uh, by the uh, people. So, the last one, I think, was with Friday. I was there. They had seven speakers. One of the uh, three of them were Latino men, and uh, one Latino talked about uh, how uh, they ought to come over here the correct way, like he did, in order to. If you're not born here, you're supposed to pass a citizenship a naturalized citizenship test that requires you to read, write, and speak in English. And, and uh, so they're violating that, that one big time. But anyway, that's it. Uh, you have to do that to become a citizen and lawfully uh, vote in federal, state, and local elections. However, um, the other Latino said, we are in Pilsen, and we w- welcome these sanctuary seekers, and we have provisions for them, and they speak our language, and we would really like to have them in our community. Now, the third one got up there and dropped a guilt trip on everybody. Oh, these are human beings, and they are suffering big time, and, and uh, they uh, can walk so many miles to get to wherever. But... Then we had a little after conversation, and he told me, he said, this is our land. You're from Africa. I told him, I said, no, we're we're from the, the parents of civilization, and the planet Earth is our land. But, I mean, and this is what it's all about, uh, make America Mexico again. And every time we... Uh, erase the history of the slave owner, we erase the history of the slate. And wow. uh, if they wasn't, you know, if they wasn't using so much uh, uh, racism language, I mean, do not discriminate based on race, creed, or color. They have removed the word creed out of that and made it membership in a language minority group. So, but any, so they can get around the 14th Amendment that says you must pass the citizenship to to, to be naturalized. But anyway, what this flyer is saying is what Barbara Jordan, she chaired the uh, Congressman Barbara Jordan, she chaired uh, under Bill Clinton, the uh, the Immigrants Reform Committee. And she said that immigration would hurt black people because they would be competing for low-skilled jobs. They are coming over here on the public charge, getting any of these freebies. They should not be allowed in this country. Now, I she agree. also... Mama D, hold on, hold on, Mama D. We, 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 got, we, got, we got other calls we got to get to. I want to thank you for sharing all of that wealthy information, a wealth of information, as you always do. But 
we're about to sign off, so we, we got to get a few more calls. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Mama D. You it's too. On every fourth Saturday of the month here on the Female Solution from 12 noon until 2 p.m. So please join us if you want to be enlightened and inspired and have a wealth. Mama D has centuries, not centuries, that's wrong, decades. <laughs> Decades of information. Two hundred years old. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Mama D, we ain't seen you. No, Mama D, that's not what I was saying. I'm just so excited every time I hear you because it's like I just want to put a little can up to your head and hope some of that will gravitate what's in your head and my head because she's just a wealth of information. So you have got to tune in. You think that was something? Wait till the fourth set. You'll be like, man, this woman is a walking, talking dictionary. She is a walking, talking, living legend of everything that there is to know about the people, about the indigenous people of this country. You need to know this. So thank you, Mama D. And thank you. Uh, this coming fourth Saturday, mayoral candidate Jamal Green will be on in the second hour after the Global Team Talent Competition. And we want to hear from the youngest. We heard from the oldest candidate. We want to hear from the youngest candidate, yeah. Jamal Green, who would make history if he should be elected mayor. I believe he'd be 28. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, we want to hear what he has to say. So tune on in on the fourth Saturday. Um, and Deborah Smith, our third Saturday host of Move Around with Deborah, says, Grand Rising Ladies, we are in the world of being ev- invasive for safety, and we fail it is too much. Too much. Oh, okay. But we're not thinking with criminal minds. Yes. Yeah. So we can't see why. And, and, and that's an interesting point she brings out because, you know, people who do think with a criminal mind, they look at everything as an wow. opportunity to be wrong. Yeah. So, you know, they look at computers, okay, how how can I hack into somebody's bank account and bring it online? You know, how can I send a fake email saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm your long-lost relative, send me money or something? If I mean, you don't recognize it, don't respond. Right, right. So people will use things either as a tool to help or a weapon to harm, depending on how they think. Criminals find ways to slip through and use naivety of us. Yes, they do, Deborah. Yes, they do. Because I, I, I ain't calling no names, but uh, somebody in this household get them all the time. They click, and I'm like, stop clicking on it. You don't know them. Don't, you don't need no new friends. At this age, we ain't going into our 70s. We don't need no new friends. <laughs> hey, my friend, I ain't going to Hello. <laughs> so that's, that's one thing uh, another comment from uh, Jerome Frazier says, cool. I don't, I'm not sure what he was talking about, but thank you for it. We appreciate it. And Viata, my sister from another mister, says, um, thanks, Brenda, for being a leader in the community. That was Brenda who was on, Brenda Waters who was on yeah. early. Remember to punch 72, I'm sorry, 75, 72, 71, 72. 71, 72, 75. How about that? There you go. Yes. Yeah, if, if you feel like you have a solution to a, a, an issue, then go ahead and run for office, you know. Don't wait on the politicians. Don't wait on the Be a politician. Be one who's going to create policy. Make a difference. If you, if you feel like that you have an idea, if you feel like you're willing to put forth the energy to be responsible for the direction of the society, then run for office. It was it say iron sharpens iron? Right. So if the ones who are in there have to step up their game because you're in the game, that's so much the better. We all win. And there's information from Victor. It's on my blog. All this, in case you can't see it, it's so small. You see how we're peeking down at this. So you can just go uh, to my blog. The is for veterans and their families and organizations that help veterans. Uh, of course, it's www.facebook.com slash group slash, well, you know, of course, yeah, there's so I'll just show that on my blog so you can get a chance to see it because uh, that, that – that writing is, is very, very small, and, you know, some of you all may be able to see it, but I can't see it. So it'll be on my blog, along with this information here, which is the 2023 Global Virtual Team Talent Contest, in which you are invited. Let me get rid of uh, Victor's uh, comment there. And there it is. Uh, the Global Virtual Team Talent Contest is every last Saturday of the month. And if you have teens between the ages of 13 and 19, they can send, uh, go to the blog, they'll see the information, send 
uh, a one-minute video clip via YouTube uh, of their uh, audition. If they're singing, dancing, acting, choreography, filming, uh, you name it, they do it, whatever they do. They got so many different names for different things what children do now. I don't even know them all. So um, go to uh, higherlearningnetwork.org and you'll see the information there. And share that with the team because it is our responsibilities as seniors to keep them, to encourage them to fulfill whatever it is that's in their heart. I look at how Jennifer Hudson uh, was told that she was not. Yeah. And look at her now. Got her own talk show. Got her now. Got her own talk show with Grammys and Oscars and all and kinds of things. Gods and, 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 and everything. Yeah. So never, never let a person tell you what you can't do. What you can't do because it is all up to you what you can't do. Last but not least, if you have not gotten this book, do yourself a favor because I didn't know until I saw it online. In honor of Black History Month, which is every day, 365, black people invented everything. I did not know that, and I'm close to 70. All of everything that you can think, everything. I'm thinking everything, but just something. No, ever. Read my lips. Everything. All the conveniences that you enjoy today, black folks did it. Indigenous people did it. We're the ones who did it. So the question is, you've got to give too. So are you going to use it? Yes. And what invention? What invention? you have in your mind that you'd like to put forth, but you're believing that you can't. Yes, you can. It was given to you. The idea was given to you by our creator for you to bring it forth into fruition. Otherwise, so you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, and you, you wouldn't have it. It's, right. it's real simple. You wouldn't have it. So I want to thank you for being a part of our Monday morning mindfulness. Be sure and share that meditation because it can help you in times of chaos and confusion if you need to go back and see it. The show is in the archives 24-7, blogtalkradio.com, The Female Solution, and the our YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV Show channel. It's all there. All you have to do is go back and watch it. And closing thoughts, Naima? Well, I want our listeners and viewers to remember their responsibility, as we said, to vote. Pay attention to what people are saying. They're letting you know what's in their hearts. They're letting you know how they see the world. And if what they say makes sense to you, then exercise your responsibility as a, as a citizen and go ahead and vote. And when election time comes up, if you feel like there's a position that fits what your life's purpose is, go ahead and run. Be a part of the solution. Don't just complain about the problem. That's why you're here, to be a part of the solution. And thank you for being a part of the solution and helping the Higher Learning Network spread love and cheer to those in need, especially the homeless. <clears throat> As I leave you with this photo, video actually, of the of our Instagram page, so please go there. Uh, higher learning, I'm sorry, HLN, uh, Instagram.com, HLN.homeless.project. And you, as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, right here, it's kind of small, but you can probably see it, but I can't. But I want to pull up to uh, the last video, the last uh, couple of videos that we did. You can see them there, but I just want to show you very briefly uh, <coughs> what it is that we do in helping the homeless and how you can help too. We take them food on a weekly basis. Um, we are in Tin City here on Display. You see the expressway right over there. Number 12, right off the uh, Kennedy Expressway. This is where we drop off the food for the homeless. Thanks to the strong arms of Jeff Tony. Not too cold. It's cold, but not too cold. It is cold, but it's 